And Douglas, uh, I'm actually very pleased to see you again. I have always enjoyed, uh, I think this is the third time we do a, um, a, uh, a, a webinar together. And, uh, and uh, I'm particularly happy with this one for, t for a couple of reasons. Uh, maybe the most important reason is that I have now got to know you during the pandemic. We have never met in person, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have never seen your software. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I've seen demos. I've seen demos. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I have seen some on, 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 uh, on uh, basically on YouTube, I've seen something, but it's always different when you have the man himself, right? Because uh, you, you're the owner of Infigure. Are you also a programmer yourself? No, God, no. I just about to get out of bed. You what? Sorry. I just about get out of bed. <laughs> you just got out of bed. Okay. okay. Well, uh, so where? Um, where? Uh, I would love to be able to do that sort of clever stuff. But... Okay. So you you had the money, or you had the idea, or you had that combo? Uh, yeah, that combo. Okay. Okay. Money, idea, intent, and yeah, I'm an engineer, so that was the I understand the, the technical mm. uh, level, but um, not enough to mm. build it. So what what is uh, you've been in the market for some time? So what is it from your perspective, uh, the technical and the business challenge in this market? I mean, there's so many solutions out there. What should people mm -hmm. look for? Um, gosh, that's a sort of awesome question. I think the the the, the reality is, I think I think that it needs to be a two way thing. What the customers need to look out for is somebody that's willing to work for them. That's that's number one because no solution is going to do everything that a customer wants and. Anybody that tells you that is just throwing you a yard. Um, so, and I, and I also think it's important that the customer and the software provider get on. Um, I think what we've learned, and we turned ten, which we still haven't celebrated yet um, this year. Um, well, this is our tenth year um, being in business. Is is you, you really have to get on, and there needs to be a connection and a willingness that things will go wrong. Um, things will go right um, and it's about those relationships and willing to talk uh, so I think they're, they're the big things that, that, that we find when we're, we're working with customers mm. we've got our first couple of customers that ever set up with us are still with us mm. um, and we've had plenty of customers come and go which I'm sure we'll have plenty more come and go Mm. And if you look at uh, of the maturing a company like Infico, um, um, I, I, I imagine that it changes some of the perspectives of where you go as a company. And one thing is that uh, you, of course, have to continue developing service, but now you also have to take into consideration that you have customers where the new updates should be still fit into their business. And I was also thinking that that uh, service and uh, and the internationalization and all those kind of things is now playing a new uh, role in, in how a company like yours are developing, right? Yeah, the, the, there is, it's, it's one of those things, funny enough, we, we, we often, um, our customers will say, oh, it's going to be a thousand pounds a month. That's mm. expensive. And then you start to drill into the various different components that do make up and drive a system now. It, it, it is, it, anywhere, if you think about it, from his infancy, you have you have a piece of um, code. You guys write that. You build the code. You build it up. The customers say, "Oh, that's cool. We like that feature." And then you start to develop that. And then, as you say, you add languages. You add more products. You add um, you add multi sites. You add multi language. You add multi currency. Then you add taxation. Then you add Arabic left to right. Um, yada yada yada. You see, you go on. So it definitely. As the product matures, you have to be um, quite vigilant that you're continuing to keep that code base updated and that you continue to evolve. And one of the strangest impacts that we had during the um, pandemic is we actually threw a lot of engineering resource at moving some of our um, system um, forward. So some of the stuff that I'm show, going to show you today is not even live. I'm showing you on a QA environment. This is very brave, which I've been told by my team not to do, but <laughs> come on, let's crack on, let's have a bit of fun. I mean, uh, I mean, I, 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 as I said, I never met you, but I think that if we went to a British pub and got a few pints, I, we could we could rule the world and, and, and basically just try everything out, right? That's what you're doing here, basically, right? Well, my, most of my team will tell you that the, the, the best ideas will, will normally happen in a hot tub, but 
um, <laughs> I, I, I can tell you that most of the important business decisions don't know. Um, we, we, we're very passionate about what we do, and um, as, you, as you guys know, I think what, what we really try and do is, is we've got to keep pushing the boundaries of the functionality um, while making sure the core um, feature base is very rich and very powerful. And we look at ourselves um, more openly than we probably ever have in the last six to 12 months to say, look, is our system capable of doing the easy things? Because there's no point in doing the really cool things um, if we can't get the basics. And, and we, we have seen some challenges where I question my team um, and they've questioned themselves and said, well, actually, is that an easy way to do that? Or is the customer going to go through some hoops to make some of this work? And that, that lends itself to some of the, as you add bigger and greater components, some of the, the simpler things get, um, get forgot about. But our theme, which will be running for the next sort of 12 months, our calendar year runs from May, is all about where to print in 30 minutes. Mm. Making is, we know we can do some fantastic things. We've got customers where we've got 90,000 users that are linked to 30 APIs and doing punch out, punch in, single sign on. But actually, some customers want to fire up a storefront. They want to be able to add a dozen products. They want to be able to get 100 users. And they want to do that in the quickest time as possible. So that is bringing ourselves back down to the ground to say, do we, do we, can we maintain that? Can we do that? And, and can we do things better? Mm. Uh, and, and ultimately, the question is always, or the answer is always, yes, we can do it better. And is that mm. something, Douglas, that you see now more than... That before, as you mentioned, like in this period of, of, of pandemic, is that something that you see that surge forward? Also, the interest from, let's say, oh, the smaller yeah. PSPs? So, so, so no doubt we've, um, we've had customers that say, look, this is an expense. We don't want it. Can we leave? Mm. Um, but we've also had as many customers say, look, this is a fantastic tool. You've been telling us for years that we should be doing this. Now is the time that we need to be doing that. And those customers that have done that, taken that leap of faith, or, or just put off or, or doing a project that they've put off are really benefiting. They're getting the most out of the system and they're getting customers that are coming back to them and saying, yeah, yeah, I, I should have been doing that a, a long time ago. So, um, that, and that's something that we've found, you mentioned a little bit earlier on about maturity of the maybe product and the brand is we're doing a lot more things that are really deeply integrated in with our clients so mm -hmm. and their clients we're mm -hmm. helping them um do more within their customers and that's that's ultimately makes it stickier and um, for us to them and then for their clients as well mm -hmm. well let's find yeah. out in the in 30 minutes then that's yeah. that's, that's, that's your slogan isn't it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't worry, I got don't worry it don't worry, you always know that i will just do like this when you're done, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, as you know, the thrill, uh, Shaq and I, we will turn yeah. off the cameras and uh, you will share the screen and uh, take it away. We will be listening. So if you have any questions about the technology or anything like that, you just say, hey, and we will try to see if we can solve it. Yeah, and I, I want to know, what, what do I get for winning the best um, web to print 30 minutes demo? Uh, you you will get a um, a nice uh, inkish uh, cup with a logo on, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, had <laughs> to, I had to I had to print it first and figure out how to do that, but uh, something definitely. Okay, <laughs> well, take, take it, it away, Douglas. Right. Well, well done, guys, for putting this on. It is really good. I think the time to bring us all together, and there's a few vendors that out there try and hide under the carpets a little bit. It's good to, um, myself and Kelvin of Beat Press have been having a bit of fun in the background having a chat about things. Um, so, yeah, that's it's, it's good. There's lots of um, good things. And, yeah, well, but I, Douglas, uh, as a fine note here, I can just say that if I, as a media, was trying to hide behind uh, below a carpet, uh, it will go like this. So, I will not be very invisible. <laughs> you think I cut the carpet so I've been doing a lot of <laughs> well, okay, take let's it see away. what thing will get installed for us then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take it away. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Righty. Let's find the, the share screen button. Always, a, always part of the fun. In the bottom next, uh, top yeah, yeah, next no, book. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All good. Excellent.
So hopefully now, guys, you can see the screen okay? Yes. Super. So what I'm going to take you through um, is, is the basics of some of our new functionality that we're building um, literally live as we speak in the background. Um, we've got some cool new features and it's all about making it easier and faster and um, much more easily maintainable for our customers. Um, people that um, know us that were known for very um, good sites, were known for sites that really pop. Um, well-designed sites. Um, I'll show you a couple that we're known for here. And so, yeah, sites that are not just functional, not that work, just work really well, but are, are really well-designed. And But we often get asked, how do I actually bring that to the party? Do, do I need to be a developer? Do I need to be an Uber designer? So we've been working through um, using technology to bridge some of those gaps and make it much easier to be able to, 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 to build. So I'm just gonna log in um, to our system, um, into our administration um, section of where, um, there we go. Um, and where I'm now logged in as a platform. So at this point, I can see all the storefronts that I want to be able to create and build. So we have a, 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 an area called storefront management, this allows us to create, build, and set up any storefronts. Um, from in here, we can go in, we can assign a new um, storefront, we can apply a URL very quickly, you've got a whole up and um, platform up and running. So if I wanted to add a new storefront, or Doug's demo, and I hit insert, that will take a few seconds, and then in the background, that is now building and setting that up. So I'm creating all the administration, I'm creating all the settings, and all of that um, area is now going to be built into the system. So I can then apply all my various settings. So if I wanted to, I can add a new um, URL in here, www.dugsdemo.com. And away you go. And once we've, oh, there we go. Doesn't want me to <laughs> put in there. Um, once we want to do that, we can then add in various different um, setups and things like that. So it's very easy to be able to um, build. Oh, there we go. Doesn't like this. Dot com. Always good. That's what I get when I'm being a bit rusty. So now I can very uh, easily assign that um, URL to my um, demo storefront. So once I've done that, I can go back to my account selection. I've now got Doug's demo available. Um, and I can now um, set up. So in this storefront, everything is blank. I've got no products, no customers, um, and everything is ready to go. Um, so I've, I've got um, a set, set up. The guys have, have fired on for me. So we've got this um, Scottish demo. And on here, I'm going to build out everything from the customers to the products um, right the way through to, to the end. So the first thing um, I'm going to do is I'd like to add um, my logo. So we've been working a lot with our, our theme. So I, I can go in here and assign and build up my brand. So I can add my logo. I can add my colors. So I've got my color selector in here. I can change the default colors in the platform. And that will then apply that. I can then go down and select everything from the background, from the login, um, the editors, anywhere that I want to um, be able to design and configure without using any code. I've got some simple options to be able to do that. Um, and we've got things like where how many products can I show on a home page? We can switch that from three to two and we can build in um, very quickly the setup of my configuration. And as I move down, we've got various different pages, so I can change the option of how my shopping cart looks. All of these things are very quick and very easy to do without the requirements of any programming, things like that. So now I've created my storefront. I've now assigned all of my branding. Um, I can now go in and start um, setting up the, the, the storefront. So the next part I'm going to do is going to my customers, and um, using our import tool, I can build and create these customers. So at the moment, 
I've got a couple of my guys with their demo accounts. But what I want to do is build up a proper storefront. So I'm going to have things like usernames. I'm going to have things like departments. I could, if I wanted to, have things such as approval, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and if you have never done this before, we provide a standard template. Um, but I'm just going to um, choose a file from my um, machine. There we are. I've got my customer list. I'm going to do a, a, an import. And now I've got my various customers added um, from the system. So also it's creating my departments. So I've got marketing, sales, management. I've got it set up with their approver, the different roles they are, and, and also the names and everything like that. All of that is built in. We can include things like addresses, budgets, um, et cetera. So making that really fast to be able to build and control um, that site. So I've now set up my brand. I've now set up my customers. What I'd like to go and do is um, set up my editable content. So in here is where we control all of the various items on the site. So I'm just going to um, do a quick search. We've got a few on here and for my logo. I'm going to go into my logo here and I've got the option of being able to configure and set up um, my logo within, within the system. So I can go in here, add a logo, whatever it may be. I've got these um, various sort of options to be able to do and assign that um, as, as I go. So we can build, we can configure um, all of these different areas as a need. And based on which area of the system, I can easily go and do that. So I've also got on, on here, I've got some banner um, ones where I can assign a banner. So I can build up my logo. I can then build up my menu items. I can then assign my banners, et cetera, et cetera. And then what, one of the good things that we've been working on is we'll be building up templates that allow you to configure and build these things and um, so out of the box, we're going to be having a, a huge suite and selection of products and setup that allow your customers to be able to build and configure um, that from that point of view. So you'll see here, I've got a nice design to show me whether I want the, the menu, where I'd like the, the logo position, um, what type of menu item I want, um, et cetera. And then I can simply go up here and upload uh, a logo. So in this instance, I've got my Infio software, which I could just simply upload um, from my machine. I've got my Figure logo blue, and then away you go. And depending on what I've set up here, that will then be saved um, to my um, system, etc. So it's a really nice, easy way without having to code that to be able to build up um my um options and then the last one i want to do is my banner which i'll just go here so we've got banners on here so in my banners this is where i want a home page banner so if i go to top jumps i've got example here i've got an image here or if i go into a hatch i've got a banner here and i want that to be able to rotate so on here, I can simply go in. I'm using a, a setup here. So we've got a default um, banner, promote your banner. So I can simply go in and then I've got the option of which banners would I like to use. My team are very kindly and created me a couple of banners. So I can go in and create my banner. I can add some text. And also on this, I can even create a link. So if I wanted to create a link to a page on the site or a product on the site, um, I can search um, the product. I haven't set up any products yet, so we'll just um, link it to um, a page of which I can find all the pages um, on the system. And I'll link that. So I can assign a banner. I can assign some text. And I can assign, if I want to, a, a link where that goes. Um, and if I'm happy, I can just save that 
And then I've now got a banner, but actually what I want to do in this instance is I'd like to add another slider. So I'm going to up, upload another image, which I'm going to use my the blue one. Add some text. And I'm not going to add a link for this. I'll come back and do that in a second. So very quickly, without any coding, any requirements, I've now created my theme. I've created and imported my customers. I've set up my site banners. And now what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to go in and actually assign some products. So the products is obviously, this is the most used part of our system because everything operates around a product, whether it be um, a variable product, whether it could be a kit, um, whether it could be something as simple as a stock item, um, we, we, we can build and import that. And what we are finding is we integrate more and more with various customers. Um, we are finding that the automation and creation of products is becoming really more important. So I've got the option here to um, import um, my list of products. So in my um, demo file here, I've got a list of products I can create. And not just the information about the products, it, I can include things like pricing, any attribute options, and whether I want them to show on the homepage, and et cetera. So I simply um, click import. And then all of a sudden, I now have a lot of products that are ready for me to go in and adjust as I need. And if I hit edit here, I've got all my product options. I've got my descriptions in here. I can map it to different categories, whatever it may be. Um, I can add in a picture. So if I just go to my poster, I can assign a poster picture and uh, away you go. So without too many um, options, I've now imported my product, linked it to my customers, and away we go. So if I now go to my customer section, and say I want to be able to impersonate a user or a, a setup, then I will now just take this over here. I now have my storefront created with my logo. I've got my banners. I've now got my default um, products, which have been created. Um, and I, if I wanted to, I can simply check out. I want to push that one further um, because what we're doing is really simple. We need to push the boundaries a little bit more. Um, so I'm now going to go back in as admin. I'm going to go into um, our make edit product and I'm going to build that up. So I would like to add a new one. I'm going to select my poster and I'm going to do this um, from um, using our new InDesign plugin. So I'm quickly going to just swap screens a second. Let me just Might just do, have to do one second, one second, guys. Just have to minimize this. There we go. There we go. And in design to show my screen. No, it doesn't want to show. Let me um, stop the screen and just show you on that. Mm. Swap over to my InDesign screen. There we go. So in my InDesign, I'm going to pull up a um, poster. So we have been uh, working hard, um, what feels like an eternity, rather than just a pandemic of building our InDesign plugin. Um, but as you can imagine, there's a lot of complexity. So we, the, the team have been working very diligently to bring this in. So here we are, I've got a lovely poster. Um, and I've got various different items on here. So if I uh, just bring in my InDesign tools, I can see I've got text boxes, got image backgrounds, we've got separate items on here and all various different things. But some of the cool things that I can do in here 
So we've gone, rather than just um, create what I would class as a, just a placeholder plugin, which allows you to say which elements are variable, we're actually pushing as we try to do the boundaries even further. So right from with, within InDesign, I can actually build up a complete document. So I can set up my backgrounds, I can set up my clip arts, any fonts, any text libraries, colors, and people familiar with the web to print will understand um, some of these functionalities. So I can really build up a document directly um, from, from within InDesign. Um, obviously an important part of, uh, of this is being able to add variables. So I can come in here, I can add my text variable, I can have a color variable, a date variable, a drop down variable. We can build all of this information very, very easily and simply directly from in, um, InDesign. So I've created um, my company name, which I'd like to change. So it's a simple text variable. And then I've also created a um, drop down, um, which is a um, drop down label, which I can select from multiple selections um, within my job. And then if I want to go in here by selecting my text tool um, from in InDesign and go in and allow my properties. And the really cool and powerful thing here is I'm giving all the power of Mega Edit within InDesign to be able to select and configure those properties very easily, very quickly. So in this now, I'd like to use fit to box and I'd like that to wrap within the box. So I select that and very easily. I've got a simple title here. I've got nothing going on, but actually I'd like to turn fit to box on here, but I don't want wrapping um, switched on for this particular one. So we have the options for both being in the form and being directly editable and um, within what we call the canvas and um, from that. So once I'm happy, I simply save which you get a little prompt to let me know. And then, not having you don't have to get the fonts ready or anything like that, we actually create a, an export file. So now this is um, just get my component, oh, all the components of that file, um, and that's collated that in, and it's created a full InDesign file in here with all of the various elements and the details to be able to import and build that on there. So I'm now going to take this file and I'm going to jump back on my um, browser and we're going to import that and see how it's interacted within the system. So I'll just switch back over to my browser. So we're now in our administration where we were. And I'm, I'm now going to select my file, which I've got in here. As you can see here, it's the one I just exported, 127. And now I'm going to create that file. So what this will do is I'll go and create all the components necessary of building my um, hold my mega edit. It will create the canvas, it will create the stock items, it will create all the placeholders, the fonts, the placement of that, and anything else that is um, being set up um, within the system. So I've now got a system where I've got customers' products, branding. I've now built a, a mega edit product, which allow me to create um, some dynamic content on the front end. And now I'm just going to go back into my customers and just place an order as that user um, for the system. So I'll take this one here. And as you can see, I've also got various attribute options which were pulled in, which can affect the pricing and things like that, depending on the setup and, and stuff like that as well. Um, so I, I click start. That will now load up my mega edit. And where we are, I've now got my full and we've got auto wrapping and I've got all that sort of stuff. I can quickly switch between my text. I can go on here and dynamically enter the text.
I can use then all the functionality and I'm just going to check that out. So I've now got a poster. I can now check out. My address is pulled in from my import. I've got my different, different delivery types. And then boom, I'm, I'm gone. Very easy, very simple. I now got my reference number. I now got all my order details. I can see that um, if I need to, I can come back to that. I can place a reorder, and I will also get some status updates, which we'll talk about in in just a second. So I'm now going to finish as that user, which will take me back to the administration side of the, um, of the system. And I wanted to show you some cool stuff. And it's been going on in the background with my import. Um, so if I just go to my product a second, I've actually um, configured this um, to be a, um, a product that's automatically going to push into an MIS system. So the guys at um, HP very kindly have set me up a, a site flow instance. So I'm now going to um, assign that, which was assigned poster. So I'll give it a, a unique ID, which will map it to my site flow. So automatically, now this order is placed, I go into my operations area. I can see here that that order has been ordered. And in a second, the artwork will be generated. And then that order will dynamically be placed in with um, with our system and it'll be pushed into our site flow, which I'll grab a site flow login in a second. Alex, you can just fire that over in the, 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 the chat. Um, I'll log in site flow, be able to show you this order, update the status and you can see that. So in the last probably just under 30 minutes, I've created a storefront from scratch, imported my branding, set up my branding, I've added some banners, I've created some products, I've imported some users, I've assigned them different departments, and I've checked out on the product. Um, so that's pretty compelling, and hopefully, as you can see, um, yes, it's not everything, but there's for being able to build and create, there's a lot of um, cool stuff going on in the background to be able to make this um, as simple and as easy and um, to be able to, to, to do from, from that, that point of view. So yeah, some, some, some really simple um, tools from, from that point of view. So guys, that, that is me on the, the, the basic um, section. Um, I'll maybe pick back up um, any questions so far. That's impressive uh, with everything you can do in 30 minutes. Yeah, just under 30, I think it was. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You still have 64 seconds left. Ah. So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I keep track on things like that. <laughs> so um, I don't know about you, Ashak, but uh, are you easy to impress or are you difficult to impress? Neither one of them, I think. Uh, general like everyone. But uh, no, it, it looks like a, a very flexible and... Uh, quite easy to operate uh, software uh, solution. Mm -hmm. uh, I know of some others that are uh, more complex, but well, as you said, uh, you only touched on, 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 let's say, let's be honest on, on the basics, uh, I guess, from what everything, what is possible with the, with the solution. Uh, but the what I like, solution, right? but what I like, what I liked about, uh, you know, as you say, touched upon the basics, you said, I mean, just the fact that you have, uh, uh, that uh, integration to InDesign is is something. I mean, because that is a question you always get: is that how? I mean, can you use templates from, for example, InDesign kind of thing, right? So, uh, I think that was a, a very good one to show in in this case. We have um, we have actually a few questions, comments. I, I, I think we should start with the last one first because that is seems to be an ever ongoing fight between you and Kelvin Bell, and he yeah, basically I just love. yeah, and he says best demo so far. 
And I don't know if it's best demo so far this day or in in your life, entire life. I don't know about that. <laughs> no, I think that's a cheerful. Uh, um, so, so very quickly, sorry to do interrupt. I just want to quickly show you the guys have just pinged me the um, print OS, my print OS account. So mm -hmm. these are the orders that I just placed. Mm -hmm. So there is my job live in print OS. That arrived two minutes ago, so this is no smoke and mirrors. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we can, um, if I need to, I can cancel that or, or update it. But I'll get one of the guys in the background just to update the status for me, mm -hmm. um, and then you can see that. But I just wanted to show you that um, mm -hmm. going all the way through. So that that order ID will tailor back right away to my order ID now. And if I just quickly refresh, that's let me know that it's been notified. Mm -hmm. And I can see all the actions of what's going on so that it lets me know. So if there's any failures, I can see automatically any issues, let's say I haven't mapped the product correctly mm. um, or anything like that. But yeah. I just wanted to show you that it was true sure. and trend, not just smoke and mirrors. <laughs> totally, totally, <laughs> cool. totally cool. Um, let's see here uh it's kind of um i mean there was a few hiccups uh because um the size of the font and the refresh rate on uh, I, I don't know 100 percent whether it's your uh internet speed or it's just because webinar jam sucks <laughs> but uh but apparently there was a little bit issues with uh, seeing whatever you were, were clicking at because the fonts were a little bit but you know um Sometimes you get what you pay for, and we paid uh, an awful lot of money for webinar. <laughs> no, uh, but I think that you, you know, I think that you you showed exactly uh, the flow and how to set up things and do things. So I think that it's also like if people are watching this presentation and want to have like more thorough demo, they should definitely reach out to you, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. And I'm happy to. There's a few questions there that if you want me to pick up on those. Yeah, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, within Design Product Academy, you can, can, can um, create rules. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So um, all of our control at the moment, um, the, the release that we have of the plugin is just the base product with all the setup, the variables, etc. The next version of the product that we'll be doing, delivering over the next coming months, will have um, if statements, rules, and wizards that you'll find in our, our other tools. But in the meantime, if people needed to do that, then they can just use a mega edit platform to mm. be able to build that and be able mm. to do that from, mm. from that point of view. I have another question uh, before we could take the next one, and that is like um, uh, uh, coming up on the 10th year here. Uh, uh, how how um, How is it going? Are you like uh, available in most places or where, where, how, how do you see yourself in the, in the market? And in terms of like countries, that we yeah, can... yeah. I mean, I mean, do you? I mean, are you have, uh, obviously not a British only, but I was just wondering how much. So, and... so the majority, if we looked at our, as it stands today, we're probably sixty percent Europe, with probably eighty percent UK, yeah. and the other forty percent is in the US, and that's definitely our focus over the next couple of years. Um, we 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 haven't done a huge amount of business actually outside of the US in the last twelve months. All the um, business that we've been doing for, for whatever reason um, is being driven. I guess maybe the market's a bit more mature, so a little bit more stable, um, a lot bigger. Um, so there's been a lot of more opportunity. Um, that being said, we've done deals um, reasonably recently, Austria, Germany. Um, we've got customers in um, Australia, France. Um, and and, and, all, all and and talking about customers is um, is uh, is uh, Infico like uh, both license and uh, and uh, subscription based or is it or how does it work when you buy it? Um, so so it depends really what you need from us. Um, there is a subscription out the box with a setup fee, um, and then if you you start needing a lot more complexity, there is um, we have an enterprise license which has a much larger fee. You're talking into fifty hundred thousands of pounds. Um, for, for the big stuff, but yeah, we start um, from the basics. Um, our, our normal entry is around five five thousand and, and about sort of seven fifty to a grand a month from the basics. Okay, perfect. Uh, modules that you need. We also got a question from Bruce Harris. Uh, he has, he's asking, does the platform support support integration with the FI Printsmith vision? Um, so ultimately, so we created a. Um, 
a plugin, what we call internally is a generic MIS. So it's a an ex, it's an exportable um, XML file that can be mapped to other systems. So we don't, in essence, care what system it is. Um, we either allow that file to be exported, we allow that file to be connected to a HTTP, so another system or API directly, and then we provide the ability of using a, a, a translation file, an XSLT file, that allows those systems. So if you call it company name and I call it code name, then we can make sure that those systems. Um, out of the box, we obviously have a ton of plugins um, for the MIS providers. Um, we have a ton of plugins for things like single sign-on. I'd probably say, uh, unusually, we have won significant deals the last six months because of our single sign-on modules, um, mm -hmm. which you never have put at. <laughs> um, I think that I could have, but for, for some reason, we won some, 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 some good deals in the US where we've got some nice complexity around integrating. We've just done a, a recent integration with things like Okta, um, which is a very well known um, single sign on um, protocol and um, sort of um, web third party. Um, so, yeah, that, 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 that's, that's how we tend to do the integration. So, Things like what we do, things like Printsmith, it's, we, we find, depending if they uh, would allow us to, I think it's more the other way. We, we, we're happy to, to play the party with, with, with everybody. And we've got customers with, yeah, anything from your fastens to your Print IQ to your, um, to your SAPs to your um, EFI systems and, and, and things like that. Avanti. Yeah. Kevin uh, Jackson, he has also a question, uh, and I think that's actually very good, and it, it relates maybe a little bit to another question from Bruce Harris as well, so let's take both in the same go here. First, Kevin, uh, can attributes be inherited across products? For example, if I have a text paragraph which I have set for a poster, can I set it for a greeting card, or if I have created a template for poster, can I use the same for a canvas? And not 100% in the same uh, bowl, uh, uh, ball game, but uh, Bruce Harris is asking, can you create product profiles to apply across multiple products? Uh, I think this is more like, uh, is it, <coughs> can you reuse uh, para parameters from, from products and, and things like that? So, let me just read, can attributes be inherited across products? For example, a text paragraph which I set for a poster, can I set it for a greeting card? Or can I create a template for a poster? Can I use it? Uh, so ultimately, we're, within a Mega Edit, we can have a, a dynamic canvas. So you can automatically, if you want to change the shape or style of that, you don't have to leave the product and select another product. Um, normally, it would make more sense that the product would be in the same context. So whether it would make sense to, to go from a, a poster to a greeting card, I'm not sure, but we've certainly got customers that are going from an AO poster down to an A4, or an A4 down to A3, or, or up to A3 and, and things like that. So, but the good thing is you can easily just copy a product. So if you've got some default parameters, we've, we've got customers, what they normally do is they'll set up what I would class as a product master. So they can simply take that product, copy from that, um, and, and you're where you go. And if you've got multiple products, we've got the concept of product grouping, of where you can assign the um, setup of that product against the group. So oh, yeah. Smart. that will change it uh, across multiple entities. Uh, mm -hmm. We're getting more and more questions and we're running out of time. So I think that we maybe speed up a little bit also. Yeah, yeah, uh, and to Bruce Rocket, uh, I am so happy that you're here from the US and I'm so sorry that it's blurry and an echo on our microphones. Uh, unfortunately, with uh, all these webinar platform, platforms, they're always depending on, on the connectivity and speed and things like that. Uh, uh, we, will, we will see what we can do when we create the replays. I can tell you that we have here, I have on a separate um, internet connection, I have a computer and it runs relatively perfect here. So I hope we will be able to make the replays look better. Then uh, Bruce Harris is... Um, Asking two questions, uh, what kind of shipping integration is available first and is Okta SSO supported included or would that be a specific fee, uh, additional fee? So, um, so, so the Okta is a module, so using our single sign-on. Mm -hmm. So that's an extra charge. Yeah. Yeah. 
And what about integrations to shipping? Is that something that is default or yeah. you have to you have to pick up the stuff yourself or you have to pay for an additional product? So um, so, so we, we have multiple integrations with things like FedEx and stuff like that. There are, we also integrate with aggregators and other, um, so we use um, Easy Post is probably the, the most, well, that, that's our um, default um, status quo that will provide not just live pricing, but you can also use it to generate a manifest file. So it will automatically post the order into Easy Post, which will in turn send us, if it's available with the courier, a um, tracking ID which will be automatically posted um, within within the, 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 the catfish system. Uh, Gary Cheek is uh, asking: uh, Can the system deal with okay. pack- <laughs> can the system deal with packaging templates, in particular three D previews and para- parametric templates? Parametric templates. So we um, we have three D um, previews. We have three D artwork files that are canal that we don't currently link to the. There are some systems out there that allow us. I think it's RTS CAD and things like that, that already have that built in. And we currently don't have any customers linking to that and driving out 3D previews automatically. Okay. That being said, you can... Oh, just one, one from me. Mm-hmm. Someone from me quickly, because I see one from Tom Vermeulen here. Uh, just in three, three bullets, uh, what, in your opinion, are your USPs over other Web2Print solutions? Um, I'll, I'll the main just, ones? Uh, I th- I think Price? Um, sorry, so okay. So, uh, just the three well, uh, USPs that you put forward. Um, so I think I think is 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 the the, the, the sort of the wide opportunity with the, the catfish platform. You can start very small and go very big. Whereas what we've found in the last couple of years is a lot of system, people have started with the system and get stuck in that platform. Whereas we feel catfish very much allows you to grow as the business and grow. We are a true enterprise um, level product. Number two, I would say our front end flexibility in terms of skinning. There is nobody in the planet better than us at doing front end um, web, web to print storefronts. Um, and I'll put I'll lay that challenge down to anybody who thinks they can deliver it uh, better than Figo. And I don't mean that arrogantly, I just mean that, that we have done so many variations that we have true power in the, the front end. Um, and that's backed up by the development team that support the front end developers. And then lastly, um, it's the team. This this business is all about the people and um, the people that provide the service, the support, the infrastructure. We have a really great product, but I know plenty of people that have great products and shit teams. And I'm blessed with very good people that are honest, compassionate, and and very driven to to do the best for our customers. Fantastic. Uh, I think there was one more question. Actually, a couple more. Bruce Harris is again asking here. So... Say you have 1,000 plus products, how would you quickly modify them all? So it depends what you want to modify. So you can use the importer to be able to update and, and the, the price, if you use, so let's say you use pricing, um, so um, scripts, so we can apply a CSV file to update the pricing so you don't hold the information within the product. Um, or if you've got other um, options, you can use the product grouping. So we've got plenty of customers, a thousand products, but they might have 10 product groups. So I, one of the customers, I think I wish through earlier to print my smile. They have a ton of um, products such as canvases they have, and then they have one price for maybe 50 products. So they can and do it that way. And, and ultimately the last point, if we can't do it within a user interface, then it's our own system. So we can work with a team and provide updates um, within the, within the database and stuff like that. That's not a preferred route, but um, if, 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 if needs be, then we've got those options. Fantastic. Um, and have you, have you missed any um, any questions, Shaq? Have you seen anything? Oh, yeah, some, okay. And, it was in and, the beginning, which, which was one from Igor, uh, which triggered me a little bit, was uh, he said, well, is XMPI somewhere inside uh, the package? <laughs> XMPI, yeah, yeah. Um, so little, do, and this is gonna, this could be like an official press release. So the front end of our system is VPress. The back end is VPI. We still use people storefront, but don't tell them. And then the side, all the digital processing is XMPI. And then under the hood for our servers, we're using Flintstone. So we have actually got people in various different countries doing pedal power. So that is an official announcement that you can quote me on if anybody's got any questions on that. 
Yeah, but why didn't you tell us something that we didn't know then? So Douglas uh, Andres uh, is asking, is uh, Spanish supported? Um, so well, uh, I'll, I'll maybe put that out to one of my guys, Pablo, uh, from Spain. He's our development manager, uh, very much supported. Um, so, so we have, yeah, look at the typical e-things, English, French, Italian, German, Spanish um, translation. Um, but we are working with HP on a customer in um, in Israel as well. So we're, we're, we've got some work that we're doing in Arabic, um, mm -hmm. right there, which is there's a whole lot of complexity um, that that brings that we're looking at um, in, in, in the last um, year as well. Um, Kelly Harris, she is, I think it's a woman, isn't it? Kelly is a woman's name, right? Yeah. No, uh, it could be another Kelly, and it could be Kelly that I know. Okay, but nevertheless i think that is a chap okay a chap or a person we can say as much as a person right uh how are display prices handled within the system are prices generated on the page or by lookup table um so it depends what the complexity of the pricing you want some of our customers have a single one-off price that's built into the database and then uh, other our customers we've got um one of our customers dan and wells pen stored um, who use and um, do a lot of uploads with magazines and stuff. So we need to look at how many pages, we need to look at how much stapling, we need to look at what type of binding. So they hold the pricing in one spreadsheet, they hold the, we have a JavaScript file that holds the calculation. Um, the flexibility of the pricing within the system, much to the dismay of some of our developers sometimes, is very flexible, there's a lot of options. Um, and, and also if we can pull the price um, from third-party partners. So we've worked with Great IQ to pull live pricing. We've worked with Fastin to pull live pricing. We've worked with Optimus, um, Solprint, and other MIS providers to be able to pull pricing directly from third parties as well. Andres is uh, asking about uh, Spanish assistance contact. And I just want to refer that if you look at Juliana Sapp, uh, she is working. That is a woman I know. Uh, is working <laughs> working uh, with... Uh, <laughs> yeah, working uh, with Infico. And, and as she points out in her in her message here in, in, uh, in the chat, is basically write at hello at infigosoftware.com. And I'm pretty sure that uh, they will uh, return on all your contact requests and things like that that and i'm pretty sure that you can can also find information on 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 the infico website of course and uh, just uh, as a short reference here because we're running out of time i have posted uh Douglas's, uh linkedin profile he is uh, pretty good responsive on that one i would say uh, all other things is non-responsive but um <laughs> Uh, I'm just wondering in that perspective, uh, when you're not responsive, is your solution responsive? So it works on mobile phones. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are mobile responsive. Yeah, don't, I used to say to my customers, this is where my Xerox days, that by, I'd be there on the same day. I just can't tell you what time of day. But um, I try to be a little bit better. But l luckily, I'm back with, a, as I say, a very good team that are responsive and, and good. Very last question before we are going to the next session, which is with um, uh, Robert Godwin. And, well, I'm off uh, to Robert already, so thank okay. you, Douglas. Yeah, See you next and one. to uh, Antalya uh, um, uh, from from Renderpress. Um, uh, there's one more question. I think we can just get that out. That is uh, okay. from. Um, uh, Bruce again, Harris. Uh, he is asking. Uh, I think it's a man. <laughs> now it becomes a thing. Uh, <laughs> he is asking: Can customer upload their own files for print production, for printing engine, for printing engineering plans or binders, for example? Yep. So we can. Uh, you have the option for selecting upload, um, upload files. So you don't have to be. We and we are very fortunate to work very closely with them. Focus as well. So we. Um, have the we OEM the focus pit stop so we can do pre flighting and things like that, making sure that files are correct sizes, formats, um, etc. Which I, I forgot to even touch on, so that's a nice little um, that was uh, the last word, uh, Sir Gibson. It was a pleasure no, to no, so... <laughs> and keep doing what you do, I absolutely love it, and you made a very, a very happy man today. And I wasn't joking, I, I said to um, 
Kelvin early on, polish me brogues. <laughs> I even put fancy shoes on, even though the, Fantastic. Um, I'm not out today. So. Fantastic. Great to see you guys. And- yeah, everybody, uh, thank you very much for your time here. Please uh, join us for the next session. I'm I, I'm pretty sure that it will be exciting, uh, exciting too. And uh, again, uh, to uh, Douglas and your team, uh, thank you for your support. It's always great to have you here. So uh, I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Yeah, Thanks, Paul.